Okay, so there's this question which comes once in a while. The person asks, will we die? Will we die during the millennium? Will we die during the millennium? Now, Enoch, what's the millennium? Hmm? Say again. Sort of like heaven. Heaven on earth, is it? Millennium. Okay, Jennifer, what's the millennium? What's the millennium? Say again. A thousand years, alright? Very good. A thousand years. Millennium is not a shopping center, alright? So it's... It's... In Singapore, there is a place called the Millennia City or something like that. Millennium. Millennium Walk. Millennium Walk, you know. Millennium Walk. Alright, so the person asks... Now, during the millennium, what happens during the millennium, Elim? Jesus Christ rules on earth, correct? Jesus Christ rules on earth during the 1,000 years. During the 1,000 years, during this time. So the person asks, during this period where Jesus Christ rules on earth for 1,000 years, will we die? Will we die? Okay, will we die? Will we die? Will die or not? What do you think? Um, Veronica, will we die at that time? Not sure. Uh, Justin, will we die during the millennium? We won't die. So how, what would it be then? So, Justin say we will have the glorified body the glorified body. How do you know we will have the glorified body? Because there were people that challenged. There's no such thing as the glorified body. Christians do not get the glorified body. Rubbish. No such thing. Then I say we must be able to answer that, right? Anyone remembers? From which book? Cornelius? Say again, from the book of Revelation... Yeah, okay. But that's a very clear verse. Ignatius, do you remember? Which book of the Bible? Very clearly says the Christian will have the glorified body. Uh, okay, we can use that. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's turn there. Which verse? So which verse you want to choose? Huh? 53, 54 Okay, let's read 53 and 54 together For this corruptible must put on incorruption And this mortal must put on immortality So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption And this mortal shall have put on immortality Then shall be brought to pass the saying Death is swallowed up in victory. Now, how do you know that that is a glorious body? Now, first of all, this verse tells us that one day the Christian will have an incorruptible body. You know, what's an incorruptible body? The body that does not, does not corrupt, won't rot, won't die. So the Christian will have a body that's like that. And you look at verse 43. Let, look at, uh, sorry, verse, verse 43. Let's read together. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. So the Bible tells us, after the Christian dies, one day your body will be raised. Right, you know, uh, right uh, Noah? So Noah, are you a believer in Christ? Yes. Do you believe Jesus God as God and He is your Savior? Yes. Yes, and have you turned away from your sin and follow Him as Lord and Savior? Yes. So one day Noah dies. Noah, will you die one day? Uh, yes. Why will Noah die? Right, why will Noah die? Noah, why would you die? Because your body isn't, isn't like... Isn't God, it, you have sin. Okay, we have sin. We have sin. The penalty of sin is there is physical death also. So although we are safe, our body one day will still die, correct? But God says one day I will raise this body. This is a corruptible body and one day I will raise it. So after you die, Grace, where's Grace? 
Grace? Grace. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your God and Savior, then one day if you die, you, God says, I will raise you up and give you an incorruptible body. Okay? You, want, you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior? You believe other gods can save you too? No. Okay. So, God says, I'll, give you, I'll raise you up one day. I'll raise you up one day. Now, and let's turn to Philippians. Now, this is very clear. In Philippians, when will we get this glorious body? Philippians chapter 3. Please remember Philippians from now onwards. Remember Philippians chapter 3. Let's read, um, verses, let's read verse 21, or 20 and 21. Reading, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vow body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to unto the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Now verse 20 says that although we live on earth, we look for a heavenly hope. And look for what? Looking where we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Means we are looking for the Lord's second coming. The Lord Jesus Christ will come back. Enoch, when will the Lord Jesus Christ come back? No one knows. All right, but the Lord says, I will come back, correct? So the Lord will come back. Maybe I ask, uh, Caleb, when will we get this glorious body? Caleb, oh, very smart, look at the Bible, good. In heaven, uh, n yeah, uh, not really. Why are you smiling? <laughs> when will we get the glorious body? Anna? When? When we die. Now it says, we look for the Lord Jesus coming, correct? We look for the Lord Jesus coming. So the Bible tells us when Jesus Christ comes at His second coming, we look for that. And then it says that we will be given a glorious body at the second coming. We look for Him and His coming. We look for Him and His coming, correct? Um, so that is when we will receive the glorious body. So with the glorious body, Justin... Yes, Noah. Yeah. Say again. If we go to heaven before Jesus Christ's second coming, so you're saying if, if we die... If we die here, if we die here, and then we go to heaven, right? We go to heaven, I draw clouds, we go to heaven, and we are in heaven, will we, be able, will we still sin? Is that, a, is that a question? So what do you think? Cornelius, if you die before the coming of Christ, and then you die here, alright? What goes to heaven, Cornelius? Your soul, very good. Use another colour. Your soul goes to heaven. Okay, the Bible says, your soul. How do you know? Example is Lazarus, right? The soul goes to heaven, but the body remains buried. So, your question, Noah, is our soul in heaven, will the soul sin? Correct? What do you think? No, because your soul is not with your body. No, because your soul is no longer with your body. So your soul with God, yes, in heaven there's no sin. If you're truly saved, then your soul will go to heaven and sinning ends. Okay, sinning ends. But one day when Christ returns, that is when, that is when your body, at this point when Christ returns, your body and your soul will meet. And at this point, God will give you the glorious body. It's a real physical body, all right? Now, how do we know that? Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians, please. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let us read from verses 14 to 17. Now, here's a very clear description. When we will get that glorious body? And then we ask, will we die? Let's read 14 to 17 together. 1, 2, reading. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
Even so, them also that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be ever with the Lord. So, uh, Chloe, Chloe, what we just read, is it, is it at, the, at the second coming of Christ? Yes, correct? It is. And the Bible says, who goes... Who will be risen, raised up and given the glorious body first? Jennifer. Who first? Alright, so Jennifer is living at that time. Okay, Jennifer is living at that time. Okay, and you still have long hair at that time. And pastor is dead. By then. Okay, you grew up. Pastor is dead. Who will be raised up and who will be given the glorious body first? Say again. Who? Me or you? Me, okay. Me. You say that because you're afraid of me or it's in the Bible? And it's in the Bible. How do you know? Because it says, be, um, in verse uh, 16, the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ. Enoch. What does dead in Christ mean, Enoch? When we die, and those that believe in Jesus Christ as God and Saviour, turn away from their sin, they die in Christ, alright? And they will be raised first. So, so the dead in Christ will raise first, and when they are raised, they get the glorious body. So pastor's soul in heaven, and pastor's body on earth, will meet, and I'll get the glorious body. Then, immediately, immediately, in a twinkling of an eye, you will also be raptured, and you will have the glorious body. So that is it. Now, so this is what it is saying. Now remember, when Christ comes, who can tell me, when Christ comes, then begins what period? Uh, Brenda. When Christ comes, begins the tribulation period. The tribulation period, correct? The, hey, follow this, uh, because I'm going to answer the question. So, Grace, when Jesus Christ comes, then those true believers, they'll be raptured. Those that are dead will be raptured, raised, resurrected and raptured, and then start seven years where Satan will rule on earth. Okay? Do you want to be there at that time? No. So you must believe in Jesus Christ now. Right? So during this period, there will be um, tribulation. Now, so will there be living Christian? Listen carefully. Will there be living Christians at that point on earth? The church? Ignatius? No. All right, so the church will be raptured, and then, but at this time, God tells us, for example, the Jews they will believe, Israel they will believe, all right, and people can get converted at this point, so they can be become Christian during the tribulation, correct? They can become Christian during the tribulation. Now, so the person asks, or maybe I ask you, Cornelius, if Cornelius get raptured before Christ, uh, before the tribulation, Cornelius. Uh, has a glorious body when Christ comes at the end of the seven years Christ will start the millennium correct Cornelius correct then Cornelius where will you be Cornelius already got the glorious body so what happens to you in the millennium you stay with the glorious body so Cornelius will still have the glorious body okay you have the glorious body can the glorious body die? Will, will Cornelius die at that time? Why? Why won't you die? So at that time, at that time someone, um, someone kills you. Can you die? No, why? Because you have the glorified body. So those that have the glorified body will not die. Okay, so that's the answer to your question. But the question is this, will we die? So if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ now, before His return, when He returns, you get the glorified body. 
in the millennium you will still have the glorified body and you won't die death is over death where is thy sting correct now um, Noah I ask you another question actually Geneva this is your question right so answered if you have the glorious body you won't die understand now what happens if if uh, someone did not believe in Jesus before he returns during the millennium he will suffer correct am I right he will suffer and then he believed in Jesus Christ at this time so Elim let me ask you when Jesus Christ then he, he lived for seven years and he entered into the 1000 years do you understand what I'm saying so assuming you don't believe in Jesus now you will suffer a lot here and then you didn't die during the millennium all right you managed to escape and then when Christ come then he start the millennium and you enter into the millennium what kind of body do you have still the sinful body very good so you will still have the normal body but when you when and that time when you see Caleb and we see Cornelius what kind of body Cornelius have Con, Cornelius have the glorified body and then you still have your normal body correct so we see Cornelius well if I have a body like Christ then we know Christ can fly Christ can walk through wall so when Cornelius come and visit you he will just walk through the wall all right Cornelius still not all right he can walk through walls and you will see all these things so you walk you come here with the normal body you want to believe before or you want to believe after Christ coming before very good now you come in here normal body so now um, will you die can you die at this time why how come you can die it's millennium you know millennium happy time very good because you still have the sinful body and the reason why the body dies is because of sin All right so he has the glorious body he will not die but you can die you you will die and uh, can grace can enough all right so Caleb now I ask you this question and this is a question people like to ask so uh, okay don't get distracted and don't distract please <laughs> now if Elim dies right Elim eh, <laughs> Elim got raptured <laughs> all right now Elim Elim dies here right who, who was I asking be honest who I was asking okay I'll ask you Anna. Anna Anna now Elim dies here Elim dies here and Elim is a believer okay Elim is a believer when will Elim get will Elim get the glorious body what do you think will Elim get the glorious body so Elim dies we know that down here we die and then when Christ return we get the glorious body right Elim dies here but Christ already returned what will happen to Elim's, Elim's body will she get a glorious body or too bad you don't want to believe before that now you're stuck with your body she will get the glorious body right all believers will get the glorious body those that come those that believe before the Lord comes will get the glorious body will have the glorious body here those that believe inside here cross over when they die they will die they will get the glorious body as well how when the Bible does not specifically say when do you think it is uh, Sing Yun when do you think it is immediate don't know no one really knows but most people guess right this is this is what we can surmise guess okay most likely is the Elim dies then then she will be resurrected and given the glorious body immediately that is what most people guess it to be but does God specifically say when not really okay so can we die the answer is grace the answer is yes or no I know <laughs> I know will we die here can we die we can die and we can also not die depends whether you believe before or after Christ return okay so will there be sinners here there will be sinners here all right there will be sinners here at that time also because we know when Satan is let loose many will rise up and fight against Christ still and follow Satan so there'll be sinners here so sinners will die sinners will die 
Okay, so that I hope I answered you. So it's yes and no. It's yes and no. You must believe the Lord before that, then no. So that is answered. Jennifer, answer your question. Okay, very clear? You sure? I will ask you one day. Now, let us ask the next question. So, say again? Yes. Hmm. Teens, Q and you, no? <laughs> Alright, you are the teen, yes. How about Revelation chapter 20 verse 5? Revelation chapter 20 verse 5. Okay, Revelation chapter 20. So adults also can submit questions. Huh? Thanks for submitting, some of you. 20 verse 5, uh, yes, what about it? But the rest of the dead live not again until the, th until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. What's your question? Is this talking about the unbelievers or, or what? Okay. Alright, so based on this diagram, the question is this. Alright, pay attention. Huh? The question is, you look at the verse, but the rest of the dead lived not until, lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Lived not again. So the question is, is it these people? Is it the believers? Or the unbelievers? that will live, will not rise again till the end of 1,000 years. So this is talking about at this point. Who are these? The rest of the dead live not again, again until the 1,000 years. Who is this referring to? Who are these? The rest of the dead. What do you think? The rest of the dead live not again. Noah? Who do you think these are? The rest of the dead live not again. Is it believers or unbelievers? unbelievers? Unbelievers. Why do you say that? All the believers will be resurrected. Number one, we already read in Thessalonians that they that are dead in Christ will be given the glorious body. So we know for sure anyone who believed in Christ before this is not part of this that is mentioned. Because the dead are dead in Christ. Definitely not the believers before that. But your question is, could it be believers that die here, they die here, and then they didn't get resurrection? That's your question, right? So my question is that, um, when the, the person dies during the millennium. person dies during the millennium. A believer? No, not, not during the tribulation. During the millennium. Oh, okay. During the millennium. A believer. Okay. Is it referring to these people? Is it referring to a believer, a believer? Okay, let's use Elim still, huh? so that we don't lose, so that we can follow the story. Elim, I hope you don't mind me using you. Huh? Okay, you graduated already, so you're mature now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, alright, so here is Elim. Elim is a believer. Is this verse referring to the believer that died during these thousand years? They will not rise until the end of the thousand years. That's a question, right? Did the rest understand the question? Okay, you don't understand, you go back and ask your daddy, alright? So, is that that? Can it be? What do you think? Maybe I'll ask the adult. Uh, Alex, can it be? Can it be Elim is included in this, in this? Or is it unbelievers? Unbelievers all the way from before Christ returned until the end of a thousand years. You think it's unbelievers? Okay, why do you think so? Okay, this is the first resurrection. Now, the first resurrection is here. Believers will be resurrected. Okay, there will be resurrection. And from there on, the, first, the resurrection will occur. So I believe that as people die, there is the resurrection already. This is the first resurrection, right? The dead in Christ shall be raised. The first resurrection, of course, the first fruit is Christ, is the first resurrection. Then from there on, the first res the resurrection of the believers will begin. Means believers will be resurrected after they die. Okay, that's why we believe it's probably immediate. Now, you look at this group of people at the end of the 10,000 years. Look at verse, we, we read from verses 
Okay, the end of 10,000 years is 1,000 years is described from verses 11 um, to 15. Shall we read 11 to 15? Revelation 20, 11 to 15, reading. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was no. F and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, so you look at verse 5, right? The rest of the dead. The rest of the dead. Who are these rest of the dead? At the end of the 1,000 years, look at verse 13. Death and hell delivered up the dead. Huh? Death and hell delivered up the dead. Who are these dead that will not rise until the end of the 1,000 years? They are the ones that will be given that raised from hell. From hell. So that is why uh, I believe it does not include people like Elim. At the end of the thousand years, the dead that will not rise again, those that will rise again at the end of a thousand years are those that will be raised from hell. So it must be the unbelievers. Okay? Now, why do you want to know all this? Jennifer, why do you ask all this? Say again, just what's on your mind. Just what's on your mind. Now, is it useful to know all this? Just to be curious. When we know all this, maybe I ask um, Chloe. Chloe, you know all this. What should it do to you, Chloe? Alright, Chloe, you believe in the Lord Jesus as your personal saviour? Only Him and no one else can save you? So Chloe, one day you will die. And then you will have the glorious body. And then you will live with Christ. Okay, so we know all this. I won't die during millennium. So what? How does it change you? Does it change you? Not sure. Not sure. Enoch. E Enoch. Yeah, Enoch. Yes, Enoch. Yes. Say again. Alright, number one, Enoch don't want to suffer. So Enoch say, I want to believe before Jesus Christ return. Yeah, that's one reason. Alright, what else? Hannah. Anna. What should it do to you understanding all these things? Motivate you to, very good, motivate you to Motivate you to trust in God and live for God, very good Motivate us to trust in God and live for God Why do we say that? Now why does God tell us all these things that will happen in the future? To satisfy our curiosity? You think that's why? No, God wants us to know that this is what is going to happen Is this a wonderful time? Yes, is this a glorious, glorious thing that will happen? Yes what we live for now does not matter. That is what God is telling us, right? So as students, you say, I want, to, I want to get all A's. I want to be top student. I want to be very rich. Does it matter? Because when Christ returns, everything, Satan will come up and he will take over everything. When, when we live during this period, are all these things important? Jennifer, your A's, your success in life, does it matter? It doesn't matter. But how we live for God now matters, correct? Correct? And I like the word you use, motivate. Anna, your parents, when they, before they go for holiday, they say, Anna, study hard, work very hard. Then Anna say, I'm very tired, so much homework. Exam is very difficult. What would your parents say? Just endure for a while more. We will go for a break. Then Anna gets, ah, oh, yes, I'll look forward to that time. Right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, we look forward to a far better period of life. Young people, Enoch, pay attention. What do you say this morning? What is train? Teach. And when we train, you must? What did Caleb, what did 
what did Caleb say? We must listen, must learn. All right. So all this is for us to Christ tell us all this so that we live for this future. Okay, Phoebe, want you live for this future or live for this world now? Which one? Live for the future, right? Live for Christ. All right. So that's it. Now, quickly, next question. I hope that it stirs you, you motivates you to live for that future. Now, now this person asks. Okay, this is a very complex question. Okay. So the person asks this, and I ask the adults to answer. All right. So all of you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ now. The person asks, um, "Where is it? What is the point of Joseph the carpenter coming from the line of David, since he wasn't Jesus?" biological father. I repeat, huh? what is the point of Joseph the carpenter coming from the line of David since he wasn't Jesus biological father? So this person says, um, now there is Joseph and then there is Mary, right? Joseph and Mary and then there is Jesus that, come, that, that was born into this family, alright? And so the person asked, uh, let me ask you, Veronica, is, now this Joseph, this Mary, is Joseph Jesus' father? Oh, think very carefully. Is Joseph Mary, uh, Joseph, we'll ask you, is Joseph Mary's husband? Yes. Is Joseph Jesus' father? No, right? Why no? Why no? Because he's God, but God is his father, and Jesus was born of what kind of birth? Virgin birth. So if Jesus was born of virgin birth, then um, is you know, the Bible tells us conceived of the Holy Ghost, right? Then is Jesus um, is Joseph Jesus' father? No, right? No. So Jesus is born of a virgin. So not, not the biological father, the physical father, correct? Born of a virgin. So the person asks this. Then why is it important that when we read the accounts in the Bible, that God wants to trace Joseph's bloodline? What's the point? Because it's not the, not the father. Now Jesus will be king. During the millennium, right? King, king of Israel, king of the world. To be king, you must be born in the king's line, correct? To be king, must be born in the king's line. But since Joseph is not the biological father of Jesus, then why does the Bible want to bother to tell us about Joseph's line? Why? Enoch, eh? Enoch, Noah. Why? I keep calling you Enoch because you all lived long time ago. Enoch. Hey, Noah. <laughs> you're not sure of the question or you're not sure of why? Not sure of the answer. Okay, I'm glad no one said what's the question. Uh, Sing Yuan. Welcome back. Why? why? Why does the Bible want us to... Why does the Bible bother to trace the line? Why do you think so? Because it's not the biological father. Why do you think so? Any adult want to try? Clot. Identify from? The Old Testament. So yes, they will trace, 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 and find that it's it's still from David's line. All right, David's line. But actually, you they trace Mary one will also go back to David. Okay, will also go back to David. So then Mary enough, ah? because Jesus to be king must be born in that line, right? So 
Mary is enough. But you say that because they have to trace to the Old Testament. Correct? Does it matter that he is not the physical father? Does it matter? It does. Why? Because uh, in the Old Testament, uh, they can prove that Okay, so very good. Because to the Jews, it's very important. If Jesus is to be recognized as the Savior, the King that will sit on David's throne forever, then they must, in the Old Testament, be able to trace it back to David. Now, by and large also, the lines are through the male. Hmm? The lines are through the male. So to the Jews, to the Jews it's very important that to them, to satisfy them, Jesus must be traced all the way to David, the father. Now he is not a physical father, or not biological father, but he's born into Joseph's family. I say again, huh? he's born into Joseph's family. And in order for people to recognize him as the Messiah, the King, then in this family, the male line must trace to, to David. Right, so it does matter. Hey, who asked this question? Justin. It's Justin. Justin? All right, Justin. Do you understand now? Tracing the male line is important. That he is indeed in the physical family of this line. Okay? All right. Now, but there is a problem. So they trace. And then why, why, why provide Mary? Why provide Mary? Justin, so you try to answer. Why provide Mary? Trace the ready. Why provide Mary? Then just leave with Joseph. Ah. Why does the Bible want to trace it to Mary? Now this, when you trace her, ah, you will find that you will find that this is the Matthew account. This is the Matthew account. This is the Luke account. Luke would trace Mary's line. Why? Why so important? Just Joseph enough. Ah. Why? Why do you think so? Okay, let's turn to Jeremiah 36.30 Jeremiah Okay, let's read together. Jeremiah 36, 30. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat, and in the night of the frost. So, when, when we trace, when Matthew trace Joseph's line, it is traced to a king called Jeconiah. It's traced to a king called Jeconiah. Okay? Through, through Jeconiah. And what did we just read? Um, no, uh, Noah. What did we just read about Jeconiah? Okay, you only want to think about his dead body. Something else. <laughs> Something else. Something else. There will be none to sit upon the throne. All right, none to sit upon. In this line, God pronounced a curse on this line that after this king, his son downwards, no one will sit on the on the throne of David. Right? Means fail. Correct? God said no. Right? God said no. Then how come David will sit? How come Jesus will sit on the throne of David? This is not a physical, biological line, correct? Okay, the young ones, I think you're lost. Talk to the adults. This is not a biological line, right? Does it matter? You see, God is so wise. When God pronounced this curse, He, he already knows that the biological line will be through Mary, correct? Although the curse is pronounced here, Jehoiakim, his son downwards, yet 
the, the Christ, that's why God must provide this Christ through the biological line. That's why it's called her seed. Right or not? In Genesis 3, 3 15. It's her, her seed. It's called her seed. The biological line. Through the biological line, it's also traced back to David. That's why Christ is still the rightful person to sit on the throne of David. Understand that? Are you lost? Okay? So that is why God will also provide um, Mary's lineage. Is God very wise? God is very wise, right? So the problem is solved. So, so um, Justin, so now you know why? Not through here. To the Jews, very important. It is still in the royal line. But the royal line there was cursed, right? That's why God makes sure that he also provides Mary line. Is still traced back to David. And therefore, he is still the rightful. He's born into this family, plus he has the real biological blood in this line. Ken? Is that your question? Yeah, okay. Do you understand? Alright. Why do you ask this question? Say again. It was what? Oh, curiosity. I thought you would make my life difficult. <laughs> now, what do we learn from here? You tell me, what do we learn? So now I know. Okay, my curiosity is satisfied. Do we read the Bible for curiosity? I know you will say no. So now, what's your answer? So what is, what is important about this? To know what was the purpose? To know what the purpose. To know the purpose, okay, to know the purpose. Now, let me ask you, parents, um, uh, Howard and Phyllis, could you control who will be born to you? No, right? Do you expect to have two boys? No, do you, do you want one boy, one girl? Doesn't matter, as long as children, right? God's gifts. So, you can't control, correct? But when God pronounced a curse, you know, God can control generations and generations and the birth will be exactly fulfilled as He planned. Can any human being control this kind of, of line? After birth, after birth. Of, no one. No one. Right? Alright, so Justin, I explained a bit more. So what should you learn in your Christian life? God controls everything. Okay. Now, when did God plan that Jesus will be born of her seed? When? Genesis. In Genesis, in the beginning, Genesis 3.15. God already planned that. From there, thousands of years later, it will happen exactly. Should the Christian ever worry about our life? If God can control something from thousands of years, things which human beings cannot control, do you think you can trust God? Do you think that God is very wise, all wise? Definitely. And if God makes sure that all this happens, that Christ will come, do we need to worry about any problems? We don't. Do you worry about your health problems, those who are older? Whatever is going to happen, God already planned it. Okay? So I hope you understand that. So Justin, what's the, what is the spiritual lesson? Not just satisfy your curiosity, but when you know all this genealogy, what happens? Say again. We should, not worry about we should not worry about anything. God is in absolute control of the future. All right. So one last question. Now this question is: Since God is so wise, right? Um, okay. Uh, which should I answer? Okay, Ignatius, since your mom is here, I'll answer your question. <laughs> uh, Ignatius. Yeah, you have a question, yes. <laughs> You're always like that, you submit question. No, I don't have a question. <laughs> always the same. No, no, I have a question. Oh, no, not you. <laughs> you're, for once, you are honest. <laughs> no, you're always honest. Okay, so this is Vincent, right, cameraman. Now, Vincent asked, God did not let King David build the temple for him 
on the account of much blood shed by his hands. Isn't this righteous killing that he obeyed from God? So I repeat, uh, God did not let King David build the temple for him. And the reason is, he shed much blood. But isn't this righteous killing because he obeyed God? Now let's turn to 1 Chronicles 22.8. 1 Chronicles chapter 22 verse 8. 1 Chronicles chapter 22 verse 8. Okay, let's read from verses 8 to 10. 1 Chronicles chapter 22 verses 8 to 10. Then you think. Okay, reading. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, Thou hast shed much and has made great wars. Thou shalt not build an house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born unto thee, who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon. And I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. He shall build an house for my name, and he shall be my son. And I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, here is the question. So, Vincent asked. Now, David shed much blood. Means David went to battle to fight for Israel. And that was God's command for him to chase out the enemies, to unite the country. Now, if David was commissioned by God to go and, go and do war with the enemies of God, then how come God says, you, because you shed blood abundantly, you made great wars, you cannot build my house. So it's not fair. Is that, Vincent, you're saying? Not fair. Uh, somewhat, but not exactly. Not fair. Somewhat, it's like, but God asked him to kill, but then now God says, because you kill, therefore you cannot build the house. And instead your son, who is not a man of war, he can build. Hmm? So that's the question. Um... So that's the question. So what do you think? Uh, Shenri? <laughs> you give two answers. Don't know which one is correct. Okay, try. Uh, one is, I think, like, he killed Uriah and that blood is not He killed Uriah. Who is Uriah? Elim. Bathsheba's husband. I mentioned this morning. Alright? He killed... So King David killed... Uh, King David or he asked someone to kill... Uh, Uriah Okay, he planned for Uriah's death Okay, because he wanted to hide his adultery hmm? So, he killed Uriah So he said because he killed innocent blood Okay, and because of that he cannot build Now the question is This was not part of war la. You are saying this is not part of war Alright So Vincent One answer is this is not part of war and he killed someone that was not part of God. Did God ask David to king, kill Uriah? Right? So because of that, he cannot be king. Okay? So because he's not part of war, of Israel's war. Not part of Israel's war. What's your other answer? Uh, like, tikam, tikam. Yes? You know, like, you know how it goes because even if, like, for example, you kill Okay, so or you or he's unclean because he he's unclean. He made contact with dead body. He's unclean. So the so the sin get transferred over to him. Okay, we keep to war. Now let me ask: Did Solomon kill people that is outside war? Also not part of war. Yes, right. Who? Who was it? Say again. Oh, you, you are nodding. Yes. Ichung. Joab. Joab, for example. Was it, was it out of war that he killed Joab? No. It was not war. He said, this guy, my father asked me to kill. Ah, this guy also a problem. Kill him. There was no war going on. Killed his own people. Hmm? So, cannot be because it was not part of war. Yeah. Okay, so why? Okay, quickly, uh, because we got to eat and go for a nursing home. Now, it, the only answer we can give 
is what simply God says. God simply says that David shed much blood. He shed much blood. At that time, Israel was meant to go to war. And he shed much blood. God simply said that. God set the, God set the requirement and God disqualified him. That's it. Can God do that? God is sovereign. It's up to God. He shed much blood. But maybe we can get some further hint. All right, you turn to 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 3. First King 5 3, let's read quickly. Thou knowest how that David my father could not build an house unto the name of the Lord for the wars which were about him on every side, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. Now this might give us another hint, possibly why God says no. So why? Brenda, you want to try? According to Solomon, why could his father not build? Faster. Not sure. What well, after holiday? Stop working. Justin, hurry up. Because there was still war. It seems to be the Lord did not want the father to build a house for the wars which were about him on every side. At every side, war was still going on. Until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet, very old already, then now the son built. It could possibly also be David is a man of war. He'll have to keep fighting wars. Not the time to build yet. The timing was the problem. God did not. God said, I've always lived in the tent, in the ark. I never asked you to build. Why you want to go and say you want to build? This is not my timing. My timing is when Solomon. That's it. Okay, so that is what scripture seems to tell us. That's all we know. So do I answer you, Vincent? God says, you shed much blood. I set the criteria. Your son, peace time, won't be shedding much blood. And it's peace time. That is time to build. That's it. God's choice. God's choice of the man. That's it. Now, what do we learn from here? Was David submissive? Was David submissive? What we learn from this lesson, young people, listen. You want to do something for God. I want to do this. I want to do this. Is that a good thing? It may be a good thing. But when God says no, should you get angry at God? What did David do? Anna, what did David do? He let the son build. He prepared all the materials for the son to build, right? So the lesson from this is we need to learn to be like David. Be submissive to what God wants us to do or what God wants us to be. Don't be jealous. Why can he build, not me? Why can he serve in this church, not me? Right? Learn from young. Don't be jealous. If God says, no, not for you, not for you. It's fine. You help the other person to serve God. Young people can. Don't be jealous. Adults the same. Help the other person. If God chose the other person, help the other person. Don't be jealous. Submit to God. That is what we learn from this, from this question. Okay, so that's all the time we have. Now, let us pray.